show you what we're going to be doing today, which is show you how to do dictionaries and also arrays when it comes to C Sharp and also Python. So what I'm going to be doing is basically cloning the video two folder and then pasting it in place. And then what I'm going to do is just start video three and we're going to go into program and then also I'm going to also rename this to be video three. Basically everything it's going to be, it's going to be video three. And then I'll focus on, we're just going to remove everything in here. And then this will just be for video three lesson. And then I'll do the same thing on the Python side. Python side will be a lot, a lot faster because there's not a lot of things to rename. It's just a folder and then the file. All right. It's going to be video three. And then the file is just going to be video three as well. Just keep out of that and rename this. All right. So now we should have two different applications. One, it's going to be, let me close out of this, close out of this. And then I'll just go ahead and add it here. And then add also the one for video three on the Python side. So just like we did on the previous video, I'm going to have the C sharp file here for video three lesson and also the Python one on the, on the right side. And then what I'll do just so that we are aligned, I'm just going to enter and then start side by side. And then I think we should be good there. And then open up the terminal. And remember that I'm going to need two terminals. One is going to be the one for, let's go ahead and open the one for the C sharp, which is going to be this one. And then I'll create another one for my, my Python version. Okay. So I think we're good here. And this one is C sharp. Let me just make sure. C sharp and then this one is going to be Python. Awesome. So we should be good. So if I do that net run on the left, I should see and looks like I didn't see that because I didn't go into the right folder. We need to go into video three and then also video three here. And then I'll just clear this one and then do a dot net run. We should now see video three printing there and then also on this right side. I should be able to see video three and there we go. So we're good to go. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do basically arrays in dictionaries. So in, when it comes to an array in Python, it's Python is pretty straightforward. Python, when it comes to array in dictionaries and actually almost everything in Python is a dictionary and <laughs> it gets, it gets a little bit out of control, but it's actually really cool. So, Let's say that we wanted to store a list of players and I'm going to do that. So we're going to, that's going to be the first thing we do. We're going to store, storing a list of players. And then we can store a list of players and we can also do basically another one is going to be storing a dictionary of, let's say that we are storing something that is more unique. We want, you know, we want a dictionary of, of IDs or we want a dictionary of social securities or let's do social securities just so that we know that something it's, it's more unique and these are just a list of players. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the left side. Perfect. And then I'll just change the number symbol there to be forward slash forward slash. Okay. So. When, when it comes to doing a list, that means, you know, in programming, if, you, if you're not familiar with lists in programming, that means that you're going to be storing basically multiple, multiple values of something. It can be multiple integers, it can be multiple strings, it can be multiple booleans, or it could actually be multiple, you know, a list of objects. We haven't covered objects yet, so I'm not going to really mention that. And, and basically, I'll just mention it, but I won't show you because it won't be fair for you. So for now, just, just know that there are types that you're going to store in different lists. And, and normally when you store, store something in a list is because you want to either, you know, you, you, you may want to have a list of players in a database or store that information somewhere. And, and in our case, because we have a list of players, let's say that we call a database and we're getting players back, or we call a web service or, these players are in a database in a game somewhere. So a lot of times you have, you're going to have to basically deal with lists because we need to store those in memory. So when it comes to doing lists, you can, there's multiple options in C sharp, but I'm going to keep it as vanilla. And when I say vanilla, I'm saying 
as simple as I can, as basic as I can, so that we can transfer that knowledge to Python as well. So I'm going to use basically arrays. I'm not going to use, there's also a type called list in C Sharp, but I'm going to be covering those in later videos. For now, let's just use, you know, as vanilla as we can. So I'm just going to do a list of basically strings, and these are just going to be the players. So I'm just going to say, so this is the convention in C Sharp. You're going to give it a type. You're going to start a bracket, a closing bracket. Then it's gonna you're gonna have to specify the variable we're gonna we're gonna be storing all those players, followed by the the equal sign, and then you're gonna do the word new because we're gonna be creating a new list, and then there's multiple ways to do this. If you wanted to have a fixed size of players in here, let's say that I only wanted to do three different players in here, then and this is this is basically zero index. So what we can do is we can specify okay this is gonna be an array of basically size three. Or we could say, we could do something like this that the C Sharp added recently, where we can just basically don't specify a size, and the size is going to specify be specified by how many items we have in that array. I like this syntax because, you know, then it's more fluid, and the data that I get, it's basically what specifies the size. So if I wanted to say, okay, we have multiple players, let's say that we have player one here and we store player one. So the reason why I do quotes is because we're storing an array of strings. You have to separate that by a comma. If you wanna do player two, we do a comma there. If we wanna do player three, we do a comma there. Of course, this, these are gonna be named, these might be names of players, this might be, you know, different things that you store in list. In this case, I just wanna keep a player one, player two, player three, and player four. So this is completely fine, and if I, in fact, if I go into my C sharp here and I hit run, it's going to, it's going to run, it's going to compile fine, but there's nothing that it's showing us the the players just yet. So let's just keep that in mind. Now let's go into Python and see how we can do that in Python. So Python is a lot e easier when it comes to it's not as verbose for a lot of things. So if you want to create an array of players, all you really need to do is this. Actually, that creates that actually creates a list right there that's an empty list so but if you notice we didn't specify a type all this is saying is this is a list so we created a list but it doesn't know what type of list it is until you start specifying the items inside so i could say you know this is going to be player one followed by player two followed by player three and then followed by player four so now if we go here into python and we say python video video 3.py, nothing displays, but it is in memory, it is getting a store, and the reason why it doesn't display is because we don't have anything displaying them just yet. So what if I wanted to do something like print and then players, just to see what's in player, and then on the Python, on the C Sharp side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, the equivalent, which is gonna be console.write line, but in this case, it's gonna be just players. And then let's see what happens if we do try to compile this and see what we get and let's give it a second here and then so in this in the left side we're getting system that string array and but that doesn't have the player one two and three and four i don't even see that data then let's see what python says so python it's you know more explicit it basically told us that we're printing an array and th this basically has an array of these values but in c sharp you can't really do that unless you you know unless you iterate through those or unless we create a new data type that basically specify those even even if we do to string here and we do something like that and we do you know that net that run we're not going to be able to see that data the the only way that we can see that data let's say that we wanted to do something like join and this could be join this could be a split or we could also do let's say that we only wanted to get the first item we could use link and then basically do that net run and show us that item. And let's just give it a second here and you can see that it's showing us the first item. Or if we didn't wanna use link because I think I shouldn't be talking about that just yet because we're trying to keep it pretty simple. I could also use the index of the array. So each item in the array has an index. So this is gonna be index zero because it is at the first position but it's zero index meaning that the first position is going to start at zero. This is going to be index one. This is going to be index two, and this is going to be index three. So if I wanted to see the last player, I could say players brackets three closing brackets, and then hit run, 
and you can see that it's going to display you know the last player which we see what happened if i do player four and i hit and i hit that net run we're going to get an error and the reason why we're going to get an error is because we're outside the index basically the bounds of the array this array was a size three but i'm telling it to you to look at the player four because it's zero index it doesn't go up to four it goes up to three so i could do you know three and that that should work what if I wanted to do the same thing over here? What if I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to see three here and see what happens? So it's the same thing, same syntax. If I do that and I run here, and then Python video three on the on the right side, it's all gonna work. It's still gonna show. What if we wanted to show, for instance, we wanted to show all players so you can see, you know, I show you how we did that on the previous video. We can do a string interpolation and basically display, but I wanna keep it simple so we can just say zero here and then zero here and then you know that we are going to be displaying player one of both sides so if i do up arrow and up arrow i should now see you know player four and then player oh actually on this one let me actually compile again and do that one more time i didn't save the file and now we should see player one here and then also player one over here so everything is working so far so this teaches you how you can create a list of strings and also a list of strings in python so what if we wanted to store so these were names and these were players and these were strings right and what if we wanted to do maybe the ages maybe it was the list of numbers instead of or integers instead of you know strings so you could do the same thing we could do int and then array and we can say maybe these were i don't know these were ages for some reason and we wanted to do you know the same thing it's the same exactly the same thing in syntax we can do you know somebody at the age of 15 18 20 22 and then we will close with a semicolon and then we could do exactly what we did right above it we can do you know instead of doing players in, in this case it will be ages and then what we would do on the left side will basically exact basically be the exact same thing let me just add a comment here too because this is going to be storing a list of basically ages and then this is going to be an int and then I'll just keep the example so that you can follow them to the letter. This is going to be int, and then this is going to be edges. All right, so this one should be good. And then this one, we're just going to have to change the type. So exactly the same thing we did. It's going to be 15, 18, 20, 22. And then instead of using players, in this case, we would use edges. And then we would use edges in here. And then what we would do is just do Python. Let me just clear everything. You can see that we're now getting player one, which is the first player. We're also getting the age of 15 because we did index zero. And then on the left side, we can do the same thing. Let me just clear the screen and then hit up arrow and then do run. And we should see the exact same thing showing on the left side that what we see on the, on the right side. So everything matches up, it's equivalent. So what if we wanted to do a dictionary and why would you do a dictionary? So in this case you know if i let's say that i wanted to make this one player one and i could also make this one player one and if i were to run this and run this it's it's completely okay i can i can have a player one here and also a player one i could have duplicates so there's really nothing in there that constrains you to have uniqueness so in this case i can store whatever i want i can store empties multiple times and there's nothing in, in, in a list that is gonna prevent you from doing that. So let me go ahead and undo what I did so that we can go back to the state that we were. But in a dictionary, it's it's a little bit different because now we're dealing with keys. And anytime we're dealing with keys in dictionaries, they need to be unique. The reason why they need to be unique is because you, if you wanna look, let's say you wanted to look somebody up by their social security number and you had a database of social security numbers. And let's say that in, in this case, let me just give you a, a simple example. Let's say that in this case, we wanted to store, you know, a social, and of course, this is not gonna be a social, I'm just gonna make up a social that is really not realistic because it's way beyond this. Let's say that there was a number that was unique. It doesn't need to be a social security. We can just say numbers. And that's it, that is identifying a record somewhere. And this identifies another record. Let's say it's a social as well. And then this one identifies another record. And on the, on the right side, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna identify, we want three identifiers that are unique. And I'm gonna store them. In this case, I'm gonna do pound. 
I'm gonna do pound, and then I'm gonna do pound again. R so far, these are just comments. They're not gonna print anything. So what I wanna do is, let's say though, this was the, the identifier of a social security number, and they, that social security number was tied to the name of a person. So in, in C Sharp, we could do something like a dictionary. And in fact, we can just do dictionary. And then it's going to require that we bring in a new type, but that's fine. We can just say, okay, these are gonna be socials. And then new dictionary. And it's gonna say, okay, I, you know, I, I want to declare new. I thought I needed to bring a new namespace, but this is actually one of the, if I go into definition, and this actually doesn't work for some reason in VS Code, but the cool thing with doing a dictionary is now I can do something like this. I can say socials, and then it's gonna give me an option. Let me make sure that I have that type. I think the type for dictionary, it's going to be under system.collections. And let me make sure that I can do that. And dictionary. If I can, oh, there we go. So you need to hit enter. Okay, it's part of collections that generic. And we should be able to remove this now. And let me make sure that I have it. Okay. So make sure that you bring in that new namespace, which is system that collections that generic. So in C sharp, this is how you do it. You would say socials, and then you basically would add a new item. And then when you add a new item, it's going to require that you put two different pieces of information. One of them is gonna be the key. And in our case, it's gonna be, let's say that we wanted to create, this was a social security number, that was the first one. And then this was for maybe player one. Let's say that that was the name. And if I wanted to do another one, I could say, you know, number six, and this one is for player two. And what if I wanted to do one for player three? Then I could do that as well. And if I go ahead and run this, everything should be okay, it should run, it's going to compile. But it's not going to show us anything, and it's actually, it's actually going to, it's actually complaining right now. And let me see why, because the dictionary requires that you type in. You basically need to specify a type on on the arguments. And the reason why it's complaining about it, if you go and look at the dictionary implementation, it requires a generic, and you need to tell it what the key generic type is and what the value is. And I'm going to go over generics later on because they're going to be more complex but this is how you declare them and then this actually needs to be also specified so the reason why we need to do this is because we need to tell it what the key type is so the key it's going to be the first argument and the key it's going to be a string in this case and the value it's going to be a string the reason why this is so powerful if i wanted these keys to be integers i could do something like this i could do int on the type and also on the on the on the type here, and that's going to be the key. the The problem with this is going to complain because we're trying to add a, basically we're trying to add a string. So if I were to rerun this, it's going to complain because I'm trying to add a basically a string where the integer is required, and it's basically telling us right here we can convert a string to an int. So in this case, we would need to make him numbers if we want him to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make him string just to keep it consistent with what I'm going to do in Python. And then if I rerun this, it should just work just fine. We should be able to see that we're storing, yep, and everything is fine. And then now how do I do, and nothing is displaying because I'm not doing any console that right line just yet. So what if we wanted to do something similar in Python? And the Python equivalent for this is gonna be a list. And to do a list, you have to do, do it this way. We're still gonna select a variable name and then basically that's what creates a list. If you hover over this, it's gonna tell us that it's gonna create a dictionary. And I apologize, this is not a list, this is a dictionary, this is what we're creating. But if you hover over this, you can see that it's going to require, it's actually telling us that it found this as a dictionary. So if, what if we wanted to do what we did on the left side? So it's as simple as doing this. We wanna say one, two, three, four, five, and this is for player one. And the way that this is going to work, you actually need to do the column which is gonna be the separator for the value, and then the value is gonna go right on the, right there. So what this is doing is basically, this is gonna be the key, and this is gonna be the value. If you wanna add another entry to the dictionary, like we did here, instead of doing add, we have to do it this way. We're gonna do comma, 
and then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna duplicate this, duplicate it one more time, and then duplicate it one more time. This is gonna be three, this is gonna be two, this is going to be the last one, which is seven, and then six. So it's a little bit different, but at the same time, it's doing the essentially the same thing. We're saying, I want to create a new item in that dictionary that is gonna have this key, and it's gonna have this value. The other item is gonna have this key, and then this value, and the last item is gonna have this key, and this, and basically this value. So if I were to run this, it should have no problem with that. Now, if I wanna print the information that it holds, I can do that. Which in Python is much easier, I can do, and then you can see that it, it's showing everything, and, and in fact, that should all be valid. And then on the left side, I would need to do something more complicated because of the way that we're, we're, we're have to, having to deal with objects. And But I could do something like, you know, socials, and if I wanted to get the first item, then I could get the first item, or if I wanted to do the first key, I could say, okay, give me the first key, and then that's going to, basically, that's going to work. If I wanted to get the second key, so this is basically going to allow us to get, you know, the keys of each one of the indexes. So if I wanted to basically run this right now and look at the results, it's actually going to complain. Why is it going to complain? Let me see why it's going to complain. Because the type, the type that this is returning, it's a key collection. So let me, let me do socials. And what if we do, because this is going to return basically all of them. So I could say, give me the first one in the index. And let me see. I could have done something like, let me try value. And it's going to, it's going to require me to, that's fine. Let's try, let's try some link just for, just for the heck of it. And then I'll just do a to a string. I'm just going to grab the first item on the list and then print it out and we can see what we get. I don't want to do it in a loop because I, I want to show you loops later on. And then it looks at that work because I'm grabbing the first value, which is going to be this one for the first key. And the other thing that I could do is I can also grab, you know, if I wanted to do a key, I could just do keys. And then it's going to grab the first key and then convert that to a string. If I do that and I run, you can also see the, the first value. Yep, and that's the first key in that list because I'm looping through each key. So that works as well, and then it works as well. So let me just do a loop, even though I'm not covering loops, because I think it's I think in this case I really want to show you how this works. So if I wanted to loop through these items, I could say, you know what? I want to I want to loop through each one of, basically each one of the values. So I'm just gonna say, you know, give me for each key in socials the keys, and that's what it, that's basically what I, what's going to print out then I want to say a console that right line and then basically print the key. And if I wanted to compile that and run it, this is what, and I'm gonna cover loops in the next section, like I said, so don't worry about understanding that. Just know that this is going to basically allow me to basically print each one of the keys. And the other thing that I can also do is I could, I could say socials, and then I could also grab, if I wanted to, let me see in here, I can also get it if I do socials and I believe I can just do the key here and then I can also print the value and then do console that right line and do that. Let's see what that gives us. And then I'll just comment this out and hit up arrow and give it a second here and we should see all the values. So, so this is another way that you can do it. You can get basically use the, the so you can use with, with brackets, you can basically pass in the key and it's gonna look up, based on that key, it's gonna give us the value. So that's another way that you could have done it. If we wanted to do and print both of them, I could have done something like this. I could have done interpolation and then I could say key, this is the key. And then all I really have to do is instead of doing all the crazy stuff that I was doing before, I can just do this, and I can close the quotes, and I can just remove that, and then, which is literally gonna give you what you see on the right side without the brackets, the curly braces, and then I can just hit run, and you should be able to see multiple language keys and values. 
and that's what we see and that's what we kind of see in here as well and we can format this if we wanted to if we wanted to loop through but i'm going to show you loops in the next section so for now i'm just going to say that this is everything that i wanted to show you so just as a recap i show you how to deal with list of type a string also how to deal with list of type integers and i also show you how to use dictionaries in c sharp and also everything that i just did i also show you in python so that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you.